Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. It is really noisy in here. I've turned the volume all the way down, and I've got to say, this thing is great. I've completely lost track of how many sheep are in each of these, but look at that, it's almost filling up the whole lane. And this is really easy to use. Um, I have the same technique for shearing them as I do breeding them. I sort of walk backwards like this, and just hold down right click, and brilliant, my shears broke <laughs> right as I started to record. And yeah, it's ever so simple. So I go all the way down like this, and one thing you should notice is that the ball itself pops up into the air and it's between these two dirt blocks here, and then it falls back down onto the platform. So it never falls down into this area here, which is convenient, because I go up one side like that, and then I go back down the other one like this, and now I'm picking up all of the yellow wool as well. Um, so I've been playing around with where I aim the shears a little bit as well, because some of these are quite crowded and you don't actually get to shear all of the sheep. Um, it's the same thing for breeding as well, you want to try and angle it so that you don't hit them too often because let's just breed a couple here. If I hold down right click you can see I've used up all seven on just two sheep there. Um, so you have to kind of figure out the right way to aim it so you don't use up too much of your wheat. But anyway, I've been working on this area down here, I think you guys are really going to like this. Check that out, that's really nice. I spent a long time doing this. Um, the roof was really easy, that all, kind of, uh, that all came together really naturally. Um, the bit that took me a long time was these chests here, because you can see I put the coloured wall that represents what wall was inside each chest behind them, but you can't really see it that well unless you sort of concentrate and move your player into the right position. So that's the only thing I'm a little bit disappointed with down here. I did try a few other things like I put the wall blocks on the ground here and above but it didn't really look right when they were so obvious so I've settled for that and it's really easy because when you're shearing the sheep you go down one way shear a load come back down and then you've got the ones that go in the chests that you're standing next to uh, when I say got the ones I mean got the wall that you need to put in the chests anyway so there's no real confusion when doing that uh, so what we have to do next here is put in the nether portal that's where the, <laughs> that's what this space here is for and um, that will link up to the nether hub so I have to build a new section of that um, I'm fairly sure that's going to be close to the entrance of the item storage area so we need to extend another tunnel I'll figure all of that out and build that and then after I've done that we need to be building a little entrance way up to the surface so we can get up here or down there even and uh, when we're just roaming around the island and I think that's all I've been up to I know I've been playing a lot of camera lately um, so I might have a few other things to show you as well, but I think the next thing, or the first thing that I want to do, is put in the nether portal. So here we are in the nether hub, I've put the portal in over at the sheep farm, and i put this one here, I haven't lit this one yet. But the one at the sheep farm is, so if I put this in the right place they should link up. And I almost decided to put this tunnel somewhere else because of the way it came right at the middle here. But now we've got like a, a crossroads thing here in the hub going on, so I quite like that although it does leave this one bit of lava there which I thought would look silly but it doesn't really, it's not that bad at all. Um, and then round the corner here, it's been a while since we've uh, really been over here but I've just left this place without finishing it off when I last modified it. So I put the lava back behind the half slabs, put the snow back there as well. There was a few other portals that were missing snow behind them so I've just been doing a little bit of maintenance while I was working on this and it looks like I've missed a block there. There we go, that's good. Okay, so let's sync this up. Go through, should be okay. And there we go. Okay, that's great. I'm going to check that it links back, of course, um, but the next thing that we need to do is build the stairways up to the surface. Not too sure what I'm going to do with the theme, although I was thinking since we got the half slabs we could do half slabs and water again like we did um, over at the arena, that was the place where we'd done that, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't made up my mind, but I'll, uh, I'll figure something out. So I'm doing this for half slabs, I've put in the floor and the ceiling, and I've started doing the sides, and I'm thinking, do you know what, we've already done this, we've already done the water in between the half slabs with the glowstone at the top and bottom for lighting, and perhaps we should just try and do something different. Um, so I was looking around and we've got half slabs on the floor and the ceiling in here so we could perhaps just continue that into this area and then for the walls we could do something with the spruce wood and the birch wood. No idea what I'm going to do yet but yeah I just wanted to change it from this plus using it on the sides and the floor and ceiling as well it's just going to be really bland. 
So let's have a look at what I've done so far. I'm not 100% sure about this. Uh, one thing I was just thinking is I wonder what it looks like with spruce wood here and birch wood there. And it's quite tedious to build so I'm probably just going to stick with this. And I think there's only one thing I really want to change about that and that is the floor here and the ceiling where we have the half slabs. I think I might just make them out of stone and I think that will make it look a little bit better. Uh, but other than that I think the only other thing I'm not too keen on is the ceiling. It's a little bit low. Uh, but that's not really too important, this is just a nice way to get down to the bottom here. So I'm going to finish that up and then we have to do the uh, the top, which I have no idea what I'm going to do yet. I think I might just make it so that the the roof just ends here and you just come out into an open top bit. Because uh, if I bring it out like this, it means I've got to bring, uh, sorry, bring, I've got to build another structure up the top here, which I don't think is necessary. Um, so we'll see what happens, but what I'm going to do next is swap these over for stone slabs. Okay, this is a lot nicer and it's quite easy to figure out why as well. Um, when you have too many colours visible at one time, it can be a bit overwhelming. So before we had the slabs here and you could always catch a glimpse of them, whereas now you just see the birch wood next to the stone slabs and it's just as you go past that you see at the back there and because it's darker it has a really nice effect so I think I'm going to do that going the whole way around. If you look at it now when we go down you can see glimpses of it and it doesn't look as appealing or at least that's what I think anyway and the same thing goes for up top as well um, so we're definitely going to do that. So I think it's fair to say that this is now done. I wasn't too sure how to transition at the top here so I brought, brought the birch wood out on the sides like that which works well uh, but whenever you do something like this and you bring it up to the dirt level, um, it's always kind of difficult. And the dirt level had to be slightly higher because of these half slabs as well. We needed to fit a torch underneath, I think it was this one here. And I've also got to place torches going the whole way around like that. Actually, I might leave it out there, I'm not sure. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, does it? And yeah, torches are part of this. Um, obviously, they give lighting, but they kind of add to the look as well. Um, so I'm pleased with how that's turned out. That's really good. And the pathway at the top we are going to link up, and do you know what, I've just spotted something there. This I will move, um, we do actually still need to do something in here. Maybe a couple of extra chests to store wheat and shears in, we could probably put them here. Uh, we could do something like, yeah I think I can actually do something. Okay right, I'm just going to add them in now. So there we go, they kind of fit in really well in between those stone slabs. And we did have a pillar of wood here, which is what I was trying to keep. But now that I step back and look at it, we've got to remove this. And I think what we can do is put the crafting bench there, and then that there. And that looks complete now. Awesome. Oh, and we've got a floating sheep. <laughs> they do that a lot, actually. So yeah, um, all there is left to do now up the top is clear up all of these fence posts from where we used to have the pen over here. And then I would... Well, the next thing to do would be to put a gravel path leading over to Avalon, but because we haven't got anything else over here yet, I don't think I want to do that just yet. As we build more things, uh, we'll have more pathways to link up. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to clean all of this up, and then we're going to move on to another project. So here we are back at the witch farm, and the project that I have in mind is to do with the witch farm. I want to blow up a huge segment of land, so I had actually started doing this already you can see I've marked out these little corridors we're going to go and dig through all of them and then blow it all up with TNT in these tunnels um, I've since realized that this isn't going to remove probably not even 50% of the land here and it's going to take a long time to do but I'll tell you what playing with TNT is a lot of fun so I've already dug out these first two and they don't go all the way to the border they go part of the way and there are some XP orbs lying on the ground here that is strange I'll take them almost level 30 um, so all I've got to do is dig out these ones on this side. But if you just have a look, you can see that I'm not even going to remove uh, much of the stone here. We're probably going to need another layer of TNT above it to remove most of that. So it's not going to make a huge difference, but these things are fun. So I'm going to dig all of these tunnels out and then fill them up with TNT. And then we can set all of that off together. Oh, I knew this would happen. I knew it would happen. It has been ruined. I wanted to set these all off. Oh! <laughs> I wanted to set these all off one by one. And yeah, a creeper dropped out from above. I really should have known that. I should have done this at daytime. Oh well, I've only laid down two tunnels. I guess I've uh, got a whole bunch of other ones to do. And I'm just going to wait until it's daytime to do these. 
Are you ready to do this? I am ready to do this. It was a little unfortunate what happened with that creeper. Let's set off the first one and just watch that explode. And then the rest of these I think we're going to set off in a chain. And that is it. Just those three there. So, let's do this. One. And two. And three. And here they go. <laughs> Four. In fact, I think we'll stand back and watch this a bit. Yeah, that is really good. Do you know what? This doesn't look anything like I thought it would. <laughs> I really thought we'd be blowing up a large amount of land and... <laughs> It would look nearer to complete when we're done, but we just we've just dug a big tunnel basically, or a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, I really was expecting all of this to be blown out, and yeah, of course it's not. Although it has helped, obviously. And yeah, wherever there's dirt, and you know what, I haven't got any torches. Wherever there's dirt down here, that's where it's going to break up. But um, <laughs> I'd say that was a little disappointing, actually, to be honest. I really did expect it to be more. If I'd have thought about it. Oh, and it looks like this one up here didn't get set off. Where's my uh, flint and steel? So, a few people have been asking why I want to half stab the whole thing. And like most things in this game, you just want to do something because you can, really. Um, that's the kind of point of a sandbox game to me. If I could half stab an entire area, if that was possible, then it would make it something to do. Um, so, I would actually get better rates. Is it me, or did that one just disappear without blowing up? <laughs> and so did that one. And now flying is not enabled on this server. Wow, that is weird. So, I have no idea what all that was about, but when I logged back in, these bits have blown up, so something weird went on there. <laughs> and this is really blown out down the end here. Much more than I expected it to. So yeah, in general, it's like, when you create a test world, you always just have half slabs everywhere, and it makes it ideal for your farm that you build in that test world. And I just thought it would be cool to recreate that on a server. Now, Hermitcraft is, you know, like a long-term project because there's no end to it, really. You just keep playing this game and having fun. So that's kind of what I wanted with this project, something that was ridiculously oversized and possibly maybe I'd never actually complete it. But I don't know, it's just... It would be really cool to one day look around and go, there you go, I completely half-slabbed an entire area, just like you would in a test world. Um, so that is my main reason for doing it. So I've opened out the front here and lit up all of these tunnels, and you can really see that we have actually made quite a bit of impact here. Just uh, not as apparent when all the fronts closed up. But I think I've done my fair share of TNTing over here for today. Oh, this project is so tedious and sometimes you're just not in the mood for it. Uh, but I have been slabbing and making progress in between. And if you're wondering why that pillar's there, that's from the live stream. Uh, I really do need to remove that. So now that I'm up the top here, you can see the slabbing that I've been doing. As I pointed out before, it never really looks like much compared to what needs to be done. But I've mainly done that area down the back there and down the side here as well. So we are now going to move on to the witch farm and we are going to be changing this up a lot. I've talked about the changes that I want to make, um, that I wanted to make. Ugh, what is going on with that? <laughs> I supposedly fixed that. Oh well. So yeah, I've talked about the changes I want to make already. I want to put the ceiling on the top so that it's dark around the spawner and we can remove these blocks here to increase the spawn rates. And I want to get rid of the timer on the shifting floors as well. Now I was about to go and look all of this up um, because it's been done before. I've got a rough idea of what I'm doing, but I think I'm going to do this off of my own back. So the ceiling should be fairly easy. As we build it out further and further, we just need to go into the middle here and use F3 to check the block light. And then the tripwire design, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on that just yet, but um, I've got plenty of time to think about it while I do the roof. Okay, time for an update. Uh, something a little strange going on here. My block light doesn't seem to be working whatsoever. You see it just says zero, and that's not because it's night time. Also, if I stand on a full block, it still says zero, and it's been like that for a while now, so I'm not exactly sure if I'm being an idiot and looking at the wrong thing. I'm sure I've always used block light to figure out light levels. Uh, but if you look at SL and RL, that's sunlight and relative light, well, although it's night time, it's just telling you what it would be like if the sun was shining. So as we move in underneath here, you can see it drops down all the way to eight, uh, and then it goes to zero directly under that, which is strange. 
Um, but eight or lower will be good enough for the mobs to spawn. And then what we're going to do is put a curtain of water around the outside, like I've seen other people doing, and that will lower the light by a further two levels. So we've got more than enough slabs up here, or well, when I finish putting them in, there'll be more than enough roof to sort out the light level plus the water. So we'll definitely get spawns on the inside there. So I've just got to finish slabbing this off, and then we'll put the water on. Okay, so here we go. I thought I would do this with ice. All I have to do is break all of these and they'll create source blocks between the two of them and then that'll extend all the way to all of the edges and the block updates should cause all of the water to go over the edge. So there's probably something I've overlooked, but let's see what happens. Yep, no, it should be good. And it's good that the efficiency still works on ice. That's really good because if you look, it doesn't work with an axe or a shovel. And I'll put one extra there by mistake. There we go, all the way over to the edge. And yeah, look, you can see the water spreading. Excellent. And I'd also dug out this little trench as well. So now that is finished, and that looks really cool. Except it didn't work in this corner here. That's interesting. In fact, probably all of the corners then. Or well, maybe not that one because. Yeah, look, there's a gap over on that side, but not on that one. Okay. But why did that happen? Um, see, these are source blocks here, but because they're flowing, they've gone straight to the lowest point, and I'm not sure why they didn't connect here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put ice there, break that, and then it should be done. And uh, I'll do the same on the other side. So I'm kind of annoyed with how the water goes like this at the corner, and that's just because it throws, uh, flows straight to the lowest point. So if we put a block there then it can only go to the left or the right, there's already water to the white to the white, <laughs> to the right and then uh, it will flow to the left so I'm just going to do that on the other two corners as well so I've been thinking a lot about how that was unexpected <laughs> oh <laughs> okay I'll head back up so what had happened there is I fell down the old hole we had to get down to the bottom and actually moved it back by about 30 blocks and this is exactly 40 blocks away from the spawner so this is the optimal place to stand while the mobs are going to be spawning in there and we actually get a good view of what's happening which is important because I've been doing some testing and let's just fill that in quickly I've been doing some testing with the tripwire hooks and the main problem that we have is that these two are too close together um, so I'm going to have to go back to an old video to remember how I did this. Hopefully I left myself a little hint because you can either move the bottom platform down by one block or the top one up by one. And obviously that's going to have a huge effect <laughs> on this whole thing. Uh, if I move it the wrong way around then we won't get spawns on one level. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, but the trouble that I'm having at the moment is transferring the signal from the tripwire down to this below because that will actually power that block being powered will power that redstone and then power uh, the block then the repeater but the problem is you want to have these all in a row next to each other um, which means you're going to have all your redstone joining up and so I need to find a way to transfer the signal directly down to this one um, like probably using redstone torches and I think it just means I'm going to have to alternate these because where this goes down to it's going to have to send the signal to a redstone dust and then into a repeater um, so what I'm probably going to have to do, uh, where are my building blocks, is something like this and then have a torch there and that will have redstone on top of the two of them and then it will have one like that um, so they alternate. But the way I was going to get this to work is on one side we just have it so that the signal goes straight to the piston provided there will be a little bit of delay from this and then on the other side what we do is the same thing again except we're going to have repeaters at the bottom that add a delay so when the trip wire gets activated it's going to power both sides and then this side is going to push first so it's going to push all of the blocks over that way and then this side will push second and the reason why you wouldn't have them power at the same time is because one side will always go first like one piston is always going to extend before the other and whatever one it is it's not going to change so we can't just have it um, have them powering at the same time otherwise uh, the piston is going to be extended on one side and then the other one isn't going to be able to push it so that's why we need a slight delay and it does also mean that for every mob um, that spawns on here the pads are going to move twice um, but then at the same time we're only going to be using two pistons at once so rather than have them all connected like this and then all the floor shifting at the same time it's just going to be the one which means 
the spawn rates will technically be slightly faster and um, because they can't spawn on moving blocks and yeah that's about it really um, I don't know I've got this feeling like I'm missing something obvious here so what I really want to do is give this some more thought at the moment so I was unable to find out whether I should move this one down or that one up um, but what I have realized is that we can just move all of the tripwire hooks back by one block so then it's not going to interfere with the pistons above and we also don't need to use redstone torches to send the signal downwards because I was thinking about that if these were all going to be parallel but now that they're not we can just send them down like that because these blocks are going to power the redstone on the ones below and then they're going to go into repeaters and then alternating into redstone wire like that so all of that should work on this side and then we can build something very similar on the other side or possibly identical and just set this to four ticks but I am going to have to test this first of all because four ticks might not be enough the piston might still be extended on this time on sorry on this side when the redstone reaches the piston on the other side so it might require us to make these tripwire hooks further back and uh, and then have two sets of repeaters oh dear um, there is another complication of course if a mob is standing like this between two blocks then when the sh the, when the floors shift they're not going to fall, fall through wow I'm really having one of those days with words today <laughs> so yeah they're not going to fall through the floors if they're standing it's a bit of a mouthful you know but yeah if they're standing right between the two they're not going to fall through so that is going to cause um, this piston to push out like that and then the other one isn't going to push back and then they're just going to stand here activating the piston like that so I am starting to go off this idea of using tripwire starting to see the flaws involved um, I thought I heard that JL2579 and a few other people started using uh, tripwire hooks uh, sorry tripwire hooks tripwire setups in their witch farms and that's why I thought it would be a good idea to do one um, but perhaps they haven't because at the moment I'm I'm either missing something really obvious or this probably isn't the best way to go about doing it so I've kind of run out of time or all the time that I have to record this episode as well so what I think I'm going to do is just <laughs> take a take a break from working on that and starting to do my head in and just fill in all of this water here and then half slab that off and then I think that will wrap it up for this episode and there we go it's all filled in and I also found a caving system as well so I put down a marker for that and if you have any ideas for the tripwire thing, I've got a feeling it's probably not best to do them, but let me know your thoughts on that because, I don't know, I've been thinking about this for a long time now and I just can't think of a way to get this to work how I want it to with tripwires. So, yeah, if you have any ideas, just post a comment. So, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.